Today in our 2017 Ford Fusion, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connected Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number C56351. So here's what our wiring is going to look like once we have it installed. Now this is going to provide us with a 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, and it's going to give us all of our required lights to get safely down the road, such as our tail lights, our turn signals, and our brake lights. Now our wiring is designed to stay on the inside of the car until we're ready to use it. And then in that case, we'll just drop it down through the trunk and we can hook up our trailer. Now when we're not towing it, we can store our wiring inside of our trunk, either right here on the floor, or if we lift it up, we can store it by our spare tire so it's not gonna be in the way. As far as installation goes, we are going to have a couple connections behind our taillights that our harness is going to plug into. We're not going to have to cut or splice into any kind of factory wiring. And our kit is also going to have a converter box, which is going to make sure that our vehicle is nice and protected if there were any problems on the trailer end. Now it's going to get power from our battery, and that as well is fuse protected, so we're not going to have to worry about the module having any problems either. So now that we've seen what the end result is, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to pull out all the floor coverings from the trunk. And we'll go ahead and set them aside for right now. We're also going to need to remove the threshold here right at the back. So we just come to the edge and pull up. There's just going to be a few clips holding it in place. Down here at the bottom, if we pull forward and then work our way across, to release all those clips. Now we are going to have a push pin right here on the edge on both sides. Ours was missing on the passenger side. We're just going to take a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool and go underneath the clip and pull it out. And then we can pull the rest of the threshold out. Now on each side of our trunk we are going to have these tie downs, one towards the top and one at the bottom. Now you're just going to want to unthread these Loosen them up so that we can pull the carpet back. So we just take our carpet and right here at the top, if we just kind of pull away, it is going to have a small notch in there so we can go around our trunk arm. And we're just going to push this aside for now so that we can expose the studs and wiring for our tail lights. So we'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Now, right behind the carpet, we're going to have these two studs with two nuts, and that's what's going to be holding our tail light in place. So I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket, I'm going to pull those two nuts off. And we're going to pull the other two off the other side as well. So with the studs removed, we're going to want to go ahead and pull our tail lights out. Just want to be extremely careful, because it is a very snug fit. I'm going to come behind the taillight section here, start working it back and forth until it will loosen up. And if you need to, you can kind of push in on those studs on the inside to get everything kind of worked loose. So if we come towards the back section here, and you want to make sure you're using a plastic trim panel tool so we don't damage the paint, come right between the body and the taillight. We can pop it out and then pull our tail light out kind of at a diagonal angle to access the wiring right here. Now we're gonna have a little black tab. I'm gonna push on the tab and it'll release the connector. And we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and pull the other side tail light out. Now on the inside of the trunk, we'll find this grommet that's gonna be towards the back. That's gonna be where our access is to get out to our tail light and where our wiring is. We're going to want to take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver and we're going to pry that rubber grommet out. It is going to take a little bit of effort because it is a rather large grommet. Then we can start working our way around the grommet so we can get it out. So now that we have the grommet out, we're going to need to send a pull wire up through here so we can access our wiring harness on the outside. So I got a piece of airline tube that I had laying around, but you can use whatever you have available, a coat hanger, or anything just to kind of keep its shape when you start pushing on it. So we're gonna 
push our grommet out of the way and we're going to start pushing our airline tube and we're going to go in and up so that we can meet up with the tail light at the top of the bumper. Now it may take a little bit of working back and forth, but our main goal is to have our pull wire come out right by our connector here. Now at the end of the pull wire on the inside of the trunk, we're going to take our brown, yellow, and white T connector and we're going to secure it using some electrical tape. Now you want to make sure that it's securely attached to the pull wire because you don't want to lose that wire inside the bumper. Now we can come back to the outside and we're going to start pulling our pull wire through until we can get that connector to the outside. Just want to help guide it through the back of the grommet and make sure that we have both ends of that connector up to the top. It is a rather tight fit in here so you may have to kind of work at it back and forth until we can get that connector all the way up. And then once we have our connector up, we can remove all the tape and the pull wire from our harness. You'll notice that both ends of our connector and our factory taillight harness are gonna match up. And then we'll also have a male end. We're gonna to wanna to plug the male end of our harness into our factory taillight. Make sure it locks into place. We can kind of tuck the wire extra harness out of the way and we can grab our tail light for this side. So then we can take our harness, plug it back into our tail light, and just kind of make sure all the wires are out of the way, line everything back up, and put our tail light back into place. Now we're just going to leave everything kind of loose for now until we get all of our wires ran. Just want to make sure everything fits back into position and that that harness isn't going to interfere with putting our tail light back. Now we're going to take the T connector with the white and green wire and we're going to run it along the threshold here and connect it in the same way but on the passenger side. And for our green wire that's running across the back of the threshold, I'm just going to take a couple zip ties and I'm going to secure it to some factory wiring. That way I know it'll be out of the way. I don't have to worry about it interfering with anything. Now back on the driver's side where our converter box is, we're going to have two more wires coming out of it. We're going to start with the white wire that has the ring terminal on it, and this is going to be for our ground. Now fortunately, if we just move just a little bit forward, we're going to have a factory ground point on the very outside edge on the driver's side here. So I'm going to take an 8 millimeter socket and pull that nut out so I can put my ground in place. So we can take our ground wire and the bolt we removed, slide it around the bolt, and then reinstall it. Just want to make sure that you put that factory ground back if it did come out. Now we're going to find a spot to mount our converter box. We have a couple different options of how we're going to do this. There's an eyelet at the top that we can zip tie it to something, or if we find a nice flat surface, we can use the provided double-sided tape. So I'm just going to take the backing off, put it directly on the back of my converter box. Just want to push it in and make sure it adheres nicely. Take the other side of the backing off. And if we come right by where our tail light is, we have a nice flat spot right here. It will be tucked up out of the way. We don't have to worry about it interfering with anything. So we just push and make sure it sticks. Now our black wire, this is going to be our power source. So we're going to have to run this up to the battery so that we can get power to it. So we're going to take one of the included buck connectors in our kit, slide it over the end of it, and crimp it in place. Our kit's also going to come with the length of wire, and this should be plenty enough to connect it to the battery. So we'll strip back one end of it, and we can slide it into the buck connector and crimp it down. So now we're going to have to find a way to get this up to the battery. Now again, there's a couple different options of how we can do that. We can either run it through the inside of the car and then get to the firewall and find a spot to go through there, or we can find an existing grommet back here, drop it down, and run it underneath the car. 
So if we move just a little bit forward in our trunk, right in front of the spare tire, we're gonna have another rubber grommet that's gonna lead right down underneath the car. So I'm gonna route my wire over there and drop it down through that grommet. So I'm gonna take my wire and there's already a little slit in it, but I'm gonna take a screwdriver just to make sure that I can go all the way through. You just wanna be extra careful not to damage any of the wires that are already in there. And then I'll just start feeding it down until I can reach underneath and start pulling the excess out. Now where our wire passed through the hole, we're gonna to have to make room in our grommet. So I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and just cut a little slit in the grommet so that I can slide my wire in and put the grommet back in place. Now putting these back in place is a little difficult, but if you just push most of the grommet in, you'll be able to pull on it and it'll seat it right where it needs to be. We'll go ahead and do that and make sure that we cut a relief hole for the other side and seat the grommet back in place as well. In your kit, they do give you some silicone. It is gonna be a smaller tube, but I already had some open. I just wanna make sure you take a little bit of silicone and you put it around the grommet where we made that cut so we don't have to worry about any kind of leaks. Make sure you do this for both sides where you cut the grommet. So we can go ahead and put our panels back in place. Just want to make sure that, that wire is not going to interfere with the clips or the latch when we put our threshold back on. So we push, push it back in place and we replace that push pin on each side. We can put the hardware back in for our tail lights and secure everything down. I'm gonna leave my carpet for last because I wanna make sure that my wire is routed underneath and around the carpet here. So we'll go ahead and go underneath and start pulling all that excess out. So my wire came out just right in between where our rear axle would be. So we can go ahead and pull all that excess wire down. And it's not a bad idea to go back up top and double check that it's not getting hung up on anything or causing any issues. And once we do have all the wire down, we're gonna go ahead and route it up to the battery. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is you wanna stay away from any kind of moving parts or any extreme heat sources like the exhaust. So I'll go ahead and route this and I'll show you how I did it. So I ran my wire over the subframe here, went towards the outside around the fuel tank then went right above the filler neck, that way I don't have to worry about the wire dropping down. Followed it along the outside edge of my fuel tank, and I came underneath this cover and just ran it all the way to right about here, and I had my wire drop down. Now since we are gonna have to go into the engine bay, I used that same method of dropping a pull wire down, and then I taped my wire to it, that way I can pull it up to the battery in the engine bay. Now the way I ran my pull wire down was I came right by the brake reservoir here and then I went as far back towards the firewall as I could, going behind some of those brake lines, that way it'll keep the wire nice and tight against the back of the firewall. I don't have to worry about it hitting any kind of exhaust or the steering column. And we can start pulling our wire up until we get all the excess wire into the engine bay. And it's not a bad idea to look underneath and make sure it didn't get tangled up because we don't want our wire to get ripped out when we're driving down the road. So now we're gonna grab our fuse holder out of our kit. It is gonna be one big loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the loop and just cut that wire right in half and strip back both ends. Now on one end, we're gonna crimp in place our ring terminal. And then on the other end of our wire, we're gonna take another one of our buck connectors. Slide it over the wire and crimp it down. Now we can get an estimate about how much wire we're gonna need. Our ring terminal will be coming to the positive post of our battery. And we're gonna be connecting to the black wire with our buck connector. 
So we can see we have plenty of wire. So right about here will give me plenty of room to work with. So I'll cut my wire, get rid of the excess, strip back the end, and we'll crimp it onto the end with our buck connector. Now on the positive side of our battery, we're going to have a 10 millimeter nut that we're going to have to loosen up and remove so that we can get our ring terminal in place. You just want to be very careful you don't want to lose that nut. Slide our ring terminal in place and then replace the nut. Then we can take the provided 15 amp fuse put it into our fuse holder. You can take a couple zip ties and kind of clean up the wiring under here, tie up any loose wires and make sure everything's out of the way. And replace our battery cover and trim the tail off of our zip tie. So we can go ahead and put our carpet back now that we have all of our wires ran. We know we have room. And replace those tie down screws on each side. So want to make sure that you get the carpet back behind the threshold where it goes. Make sure your weather stripping is on the right side, and we'll put the other side back in too. And when you put your carpet back on the driver's side, you just want to make sure that your four pole wiring is sticking out underneath the floor coverings here so that we have access to it, but we can always just store it back here by our spare tire when we're not using it. Then we can put the carpet back in. And then when, we're, when we are ready to use our four pole, we can simply pull up the carpet, grab it, and we can drop it out the trunk area. Just wanna make sure to stay away from the latch itself, but the weather stripping here provide enough cushion where it won't damage the wire. Then we can simply close our trunk hook up to our trailer and we'll be ready. But we're gonna go ahead and test everything to make sure that all the lighting functions are working properly. So I'm gonna plug in my four pole tester. And if you need one of these, you can pick one up on our website here at eTrailer.com using part number I26. So I'll go ahead and run the lights and verify that they're all working properly. So if I turn my headlights on, we can see that those are working as well as the left turn signal right turn signal, and my brake lights. So now all we have left to do is hook up to our trailer and hit the road. And that'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C56351 on our 2017 Ford Fusion.